call of booty. Advanced Titan Field. What will war look like in the year 2050? According to Sledgehammer Games, it looked like a bunch of people eating the Super Mario mushrooms and wearing the suits that Matt Damon does from Elysium. And in addition, I found this game has a whole bunch of other things that are kind of referencing other movies or other TV shows and stuff, especially in the bi the biggest one to me was if you guys have seen Minority Report, an older movie by uh, Steven Spielberg with Tom Cruise. And this shotgun I'm using here, it looks exactly the same and does the same type of thing that this one does. <laughs> YouTube, please don't sue my brains out for using that clip. But even though the shotgun in Call of Duty Advanced Warfare doesn't reload the same way, it does uh, look quite similar. But about the game, what is it? I mean, how is it? Is it any fun? Is it any good? Uh, what, what's wrong with it? Well, at this point, you guys have probably seen a lot of videos about people talking about what the game does right, what it does wrong. But I, I thought I'd just give you guys just a quick touch up on some of the things that I noticed that may be the same and maybe different from what you've heard. So obviously one of the biggest criticisms with the uh, PC version uh, has been the mouse. I mean, in any first person shooter, you need to have a good mouse. And if you don't have a good mouse, good mouse control, aim and everything, there's really no point. That's the bread and butter of PC gaming. And this game definitely has some problems in that department. If your mouse has a polling rate over 1000, then you're going to have to turn it down. I've had to switch mine to 128. However, I have sometimes forgotten to switch that on, and it, it actually worked okay. Um, there were a few times when it was definitely noticeable. So, if you are having troubles, I think turning that, uh, not the DPI, but the actual polling rate, uh, will probably help out quite a bit. But that's something, you know, people shouldn't have to do that. That should be something that Sledgehammer took into account when they made this game. So, it's kind of a, uh, a lazy move on their part. In terms of the actual feel of the game, it still has, the, the best way I can describe the feel of it is kind of plasticky. The guns feel plastic, the environments feel plastic, uh, they don't have the same sort of weight and substance that say a game like Battlefield or Arma has, in that the maps, the textures, uh, just your surroundings and the environment just feels like it has substance. In this game, it's always felt like this to me, but it just feels like everything, even the concrete walls, when you shoot at things, the way it feels, the way it sounds, it all sounds like plastic. And it really detracts from, from kind of immersing you in the game, but I mean, I guess Call of Duty hasn't really tried to immerse you too, too much in their games. Usually they're, I mean, they are arcade games. That's what they're supposed to be. That's what they're going for. Now, in terms of ranking them against each other, this one is definitely a lot better than Call of Duty Ghosts. Call of Duty Ghosts ranks among one of the worst poorly optimized games ever on PC, in my opinion. This, the mouse control, the mouse support was so bad, as was the movement and the overall feel of the game. What I can tell you is playing a game like this helps me really appreciate the greats out there like Counter-Strike and Battlefield. Now, of course, Battlefield 4 has had quite a rough time as of late, but I feel like DICE is really trying to prove people wrong, prove the popular opinion wrong, and try to sway people before Hardline comes out to reinvest in their games. And I feel like they're, they're succeeding for the most part. I mean, Battlefield 4 certainly feels a lot better, plays a lot better than it did at launch and even just a few months ago. So at the end of the day, I give Advanced Warfare 4 out of 10 bagels. 4 out of 10 bagels sounds about right. No more, no less. It's okay, it's fun, but it's nothing new, and it certainly is not worth the $60 price tag. The biggest thing that's missing out of this, and, and bear with me here, is tactics. What if Call of Duty modified their engine, modified their maps, their game style, and made a game that was a lot more tactical? Now I know everyone plays a Call of Duty game because you want to have that lone wolf feeling, you want to feel like a badass, you want to just go around and just shoot things, shoot things everywhere. But what if they changed it up and they made a game one year that's kind of like Rainbow Six Siege, I think it's the newest one they're making, or Counter-Strike something. What if they made a game like that? Don't even, you know, just give us like five maps or something, you know, don't even have to put a whole bunch of effort into it because I know they're all about not putting effort into PC games. And just make a game that's got the same sort of feeling as Counter-Strike. You know, it, it could be quite interesting, I think. Now, would it be the same quality? Would it still be as fun as Counter-Strike? I am guessing no. But at least it would give people that want to have that tactical sense, you know, more of an option. And obviously, a large majority of PC players want to have games where you get to be tactical. What are the most played games on Steam or anywhere on PC right now? Counter-Strike, 
and Daisy. Those are the two most tactical games you really can play on PC. I mean, if you're playing Daisy, you're most likely playing with mates and stuff, and you're probably pulling out crazy tactics. Oh, yeah, you go into town, I'll snipe you, yeah, I'll, I'll cover you. And then, of course, you've got Counter Strike, in which you've got people in teams of five coordinating and trying to win objectives and get those hostages or plant those bombs. These are extremely tactical games, and they're the most played games, perhaps on the market at the moment, but I know for sure on PC. And so I think if Call of Duty exploited this and they, they you know, made a great quality game, I almost am having to hold back laughter saying quality and Call of Duty in the same sentence, but if they did it, I, I really think it could be something that would be really fun and would probably be reminiscent of Rainbow Six Siege, which, of course, Rainbow Six Siege hasn't come out yet, but I, I truly believe that Rainbow Six Siege is going to be a great game. It looks so cool, and the destructibility just seems like it'll add a whole new level of depth and a certain amount of immersion that I think Call of Duty has been missing. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. hope you've enjoyed this gameplay. I've had some pretty bodacious moments. And I understand that, that comparing Call of Duty and Rainbow Six Siege and all these different games is, is kind of like comparing apples to oranges. Call of Duty will always try to be that lone wolf game. And I'm not saying Call of Duty has to switch up their entire style. That would be nice. But, if they could just add a new level of depth to their games and add some new modes, make something that's really fresh. There's a lot of potential I feel it could be there, but if you guys disagree, feel free to let me know down below in the comments, and I'll try to respond the best I can. So, I'll see you guys in the next video. You guys have a good one. Bye-bye.